So Qualcomm has just announced the Snapdragon X Plus, a new processor in its Snapdragon X range. Now previously we had that Snapdragon X Elite, and I've covered that in several different videos here on this channel. Now we have the Snapdragon X Plus. Now the Snapdragon X range are laptop processors using custom ARM-based CPU cores that Qualcomm have designed following their purchase of Nuvia. They promise high performance and great uh, energy efficiency. So in this video, I want to look at what is the Snapdragon X Plus, touch on a little bit about the differences between it and the Snapdragon X Elite, and then we also look at the naming scheme that they've got for the different part numbers. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's take a look at the Snapdragon X Plus. This is the new version compared to the Snapdragon X Elite. And let's see what we can find out about it. So here are the highlights. So it's built on a four nanometer process. It's got 10 high performance cores, no efficiency cores, just 10 high performance cores. This is compared to the 12 that you get in the Snapdragon X Elite. Clocks, maximum clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz. That's lower than the Snapdragon X Elite, and we'll talk more about that later. And it has 42 megabytes uh, of cache in total. That would be L3 cache and system cache and so on. Okay, so let's dive in a bit more and find out about the performance of that CPU. So this is uh, a slide from Qualcomm itself showing the relative performance using Geekbench multi-threaded scores. Now this probably is a good score for the M3. Remember this is not the M3 Pro or any other variants. This is the vanilla M3, uh, which has eight cores. And the Snapdragon X Plus is 10% faster in multi-threaded. Remember it's got 10 cores, so there is an aspect of that. Multi-threaded, more cores, higher score. And the Snapdragon X Elite, more core still is again faster still. However, the key takeaway is that this chip is coming into the marketplace in laptops that we're gonna see very, very soon on par and in the same playing field as the M3, not the M1. This was known as an M1 killer, then the M2, this was known as an M2 killer. Now the M3's come out, this is in the same area as the M3. So Qualcomm are not coming out already behind, they're coming out at least on par and we'll see what we have in the future. And when that translates to power efficiency, here you can see the, the graph, and they're comparing this to some AMD and Intel processors, and they're saying that the, uh, the Snapdragon X Plus is more power efficient and greater performance for multi-threaded compared to these two uh, uh, particular processors, the Intel and the AMD. And now the numbers using Cinebench 2024, again, multi-threaded. Again, we can see here that the Snapdragon X Plus is faster and more power efficient than those two uh, Intel and AMD processors. And of course, the Snapdragon X Elite, again, uh, higher performance than all of them and uh, less power. So this is the big ticket item that we're seeing here is that the performance is one thing, yes, important, but we're also talking about power efficiency uh, for that performance, which is what gives us the longer battery life and so on. And now on to the GPU. We've got the Qualcomm Adreno GPU. Again, Qualcomm recently have not started releasing precise numbers about what that GPU is. You just know it's the Adreno GPU in that particular chip. Up to 3.8 teraflops, supports natively DX12. That's very important. So there's not emulation going on with the GPU. If you've got a, a API call to DX12, then they're gonna go straight through to the native uh, drivers for that. And a bit about the encode and decode, 4K, 60 frames per second, 10-bit encode for H.264, H.265, and AV1. And then for decode, you've got 4K, 120 frames a second, 10-bit, H.264, H.265, VP9, and AV1. So a good selection of both hardware, encode, and decode in there, including AV1 support. And when you look at the performance of this, and this is using 3D Mark Wildlife uh, test. Again, this interesting about this Intel Core Ultra 7 is this has the mobile version of the Arc, Intel Arc GPU in it. So here we're seeing a greater performance at lower power, which again is the the selling point of these processors. 
So basically we've got now the Snapdragon X Elite with 12 processors in it, 12 CPU cores, the Snapdragon X Plus with 10. Both of them come with a built-in NPU that's built based on uh, the uh, Qualcomm Hexagon uh, DSP as it used to be, but it's evolved into so much more now for doing neural network. 45 uh, tops, which means that uh, Qualcomm are very keen to highlight and uh, to demonstrate the generative AI capabilities that are happening on chip with these processors, not something you have to do in the cloud, happens on chip because it has that local uh, NPU that can handle it. Now, one more thing to look at is that now that there are different Snapdragon X processors, there is a naming scheme and we need to understand the naming scheme. So what do we have here? Well, first of all, the name Snapdragon X, fair enough, that's easy enough to understand. And then this is the, the one means it's the first generation. So the current chips we have are the Snapdragon X1 and then it will be P for plus, E for elite. So that will be fairly easy to understand. Then these last two ones, you've got the uh, SKU, uh, the SKU, uh, and then a variant number. Now, the higher this number, the better the processor, and then the variant to make sure if there are ones for different markets, I'm supposing that you can get a 64-101 and a 64-100 or whatever. And so the current set of processors that are available are this. You've got the Snapdragon X Elite X1E84, which has got 12 cores, runs at 3.8 gigahertz and can boost to 4.2 gigahertz with up to two cores boosting in that. And it's got a 4.6 teraflop GPU. So this is the best one. So it's the 84100. You then see there are two more Snapdragon X Elite processors, both with 12 cores, both with the same amount of cache, but clocked at 3.4 gigahertz. And one of them has the ability to do dual core boost up to four gigahertz and they've both got the same GPU and again the same NPUs and here you can see the different uh, SKUs uh, as they go down uh, across the range but all Snapdragon X Elite which means they've got the 12 cores. Then you go to the Snapdragon X Plus and at the moment we've got one of those listed so it's the X1P for plus 64 10 cores no dual core boost at all uh, and it looks like the same performant GPU definitely the same uh, NPU clocked at that 3.4 gigahertz. So basically the difference in these two here is this is a 12 core version, this is a 10 core version. Then you've got another 12 core version but it's got dual core boost in it and then you've got the flagship one which has got a greater boost and a greater GPU in it. And of course I'm sure there are going to be different ones added to this over the time at least certainly when the next generation comes out uh, and we're going to end up uh, with a whole table of the different varieties that you can get. Okay, so a quick summary here of the Snapdragon X Elite. Uh, in the top left-hand corner showing how important it is nowadays, it's built for AI with the Hexagon uh, NPU built into it. You've got support for three external 4K HDR monitors, 10 cores up to 3.4 gigahertz, great performance per watt, LPDDR5X, uh, main memory with 42 megabytes of total cache. The Adreno uh, GPU scalable means is that you can find this in, you know, laptops. You could find it in mini desktops if that's what they wanted to do. You can find it with ventilation, without ventilation. You, it can go in all different kinds of uh, form factors according to whatever the OEMs, you know, Lenovo, Samsung, whoever they're going to be, what they uh, want to do with it. Okay, so there you have it, the Snapdragon X Plus a new processor in the Snapdragon X range to go alongside the Snapdragon X Elite. Now we should be seeing laptops with the Snapdragon X Elite and the Snapdragon X Plus uh, coming out very, very soon. And of course, it's gonna be very interesting to see their performance, to see uh, their energy efficiency, and to see how well the Windows on ARM uh, kind of ecosystem has matured over the last couple of years. So do stick around if you want to find out about all those things as they get announced. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.